Okay, guys, before you dive into this video, please remember to give a thumbs up or subscribe and so that you can get all the videos you want uh, and you get notified and you help us support us so more people can see these videos so that they can educate themselves and understand diabetes better. So type 1 diabetes is autoimmune destruction of beta cells. So basically what happens is as a result of viral or any other environmental stimulus that triggers immune system to attack the beta cells, to attack the beta cells. So once that happens, then slowly but surely beta cells die. Sometimes that happens very quickly, sometimes that happens uh, slowly. Uh, some people get type 1 diabetes uh, right after birth, some people get it in their early teens, and so forth. So, the type 2 diabetic patients, on the other hand, they are developing disease at a much later stage, and we are going to talk about why that's the case. Now, type 1 diabetic patients, as a result, they have autoimmune markers, uh, such as antibodies, GAD antibodies, uh, insulin islet cell antibodies, etc., which we check for. Um, now, type 2 diabetic patients are, on the other hand, more insulin resistant than insulin deficient. So as a result, they actually make a lot of insulin, it's just that that insulin is still not enough to uh, take care of the blood sugar load or the insulin resistance load, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Now, uh, type 1 diabetic patients also uh, are totally insulin dependent, right? So type 2 diabetic patients also take insulin. That does not mean that they're insulin dependent. Now some of them are, but you know, to understand if you're insulin dependent or not, that is something that your doctor will tell you. Just because you're in insulin does not mean that you are actually insulin dependent. But type 1 diabetic patients versus type 2, definitely type 1 diabetic patients are insulin dependent. If they don't take the insulin, they will end up with a very uh, severe consequence, which is called diabetic ketoacidosis. And diabetic ketoacidosis can actually be very, very dangerous. It can lead to death. And uh, as a result, we try to avoid diabetic ketoacidosis at all costs. Type 2 diabetic patients can get diabetic ketoacidosis as well, but that is much more rare uh, and only happens to a certain subset of type 2 diabetic patients. Now, patients are typically overweight with type 2 diabetes. Uh, not always the case, but most of the time. Uh, type 1 diabetic patients, are, on the other hand, they are more skinny, they are uh, not overweight, maybe normal weight or underweight, uh, but that's how we initially assess the patient. We look at them, they, we call that phenotype, see how they look, but we never ever go by the looks. And we generally take out our history, we put the pieces together. Uh, so that's what we do at SugarMD. So we make sure that we understand the patient first, we understand their needs are, what their needs are, and then we create a craft, a treatment plan. It doesn't have to be medications, right? So we try to get the medications off the list. Uh, we are not pro-medicine uh, doctors. So we always try to eliminate diabetes, put the diabetes into remission. Uh, but also, if, if a medication is needed, then we try to get the best medication possible, the most effective, most cost-effective. Um, and also, uh, when you work with us, we typically um, will get you expensive medications for a very, very marginal price. It's just that we have been doing this for a long time. We know how to do it. We dedicate time for it. 
that's what is missing in a lot of other diabetes practices or endocrinologist offices. The overhead is so much that nobody wants to deal with insurance companies, but we do. That's what we do. If, if, we, if we think that you need a Dexcom G6, if we, if we think that you need Freestyle Libre, we, we push hard for it. If, if, if we think that you need Ozempic, if we, need, if we think that you need Rivalsos or any of these expensive medications, we, we try our best to get you, and 90% of the time we are successful. Now back to type 1 versus type 2 diabetes. Um, type 1 diabetic patients tend to also develop other autoimmune disorders. Um, that is not uncommon. So we regularly check them for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We check them for celiac disease. We check them for hypothyroidism, as, as we said. Uh, adrenal insufficiency is not uncommon with type 1 diabetic patients. So we always on the lookout uh, to find out if they develop any of these problems, especially when they complain. If they don't complain, we still do serial screenings once a year to make sure these patients do not develop these other problems. Now, type 2 diabetics do not have that problem just because the underlying pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes is totally different than type 1. It is not that the beta cells are under attack like in type 1 diabetes. Basically, uh, type 2 diabetes is more of an insulin resistance problem. Uh, it's a supply and demand disease. So if your supply genetically is not strong, if you're not making a lot of insulin, then you may develop type uh, 2 diabetes uh, if you become insulin resistant. So it's just like, uh, you know, if, if you are making 5000 a month, if you start spending 6000 a month, you're going to go into debt and, and you can go bankrupt. So the body works the same way. So if your body can make so much insulin, but your body needs more insulin just because of the body size, etc., uh, again, that's totally relative terms. So you may not be a big guy, but if your body is not making enough insulin, you know, that's not necessarily type 1 because you're still making insulin, but just not good enough to be able to uh, take care of the, uh, the blood sugar. So their blood sugar chronically runs high. They don't get, go into diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, but they sometimes need a touch of a medicine in order to help with that. So a lot of videos you guys are watching sometimes, they'll say, oh, diabetes is a sugar disease. You, you cut the sugar and then suddenly diabetes goes away. Well, that may be true for some patients, but not for every patient. A lot of patients will still come and tell me, Doc, hey, I've cut the carbs totally, I've been on keto diet, my sugars are still running high. Uh, just because, you know, just because you don't eat carbs doesn't mean that your body doesn't make any insulin. Your body still makes insulin. That is how you get the glucose into cells. Even if you are on, you're on a keto diet, for example, your body will turn protein into glucose. And for that glucose to get into your cells, you still need insulin. So you have to have insulin in your body. So as a result, guys, so, uh, and then sometimes, you know, as we get older, that's another fact that most people don't understand, everything goes down, right? So our height goes down, our kidney function goes down, lung goes down. Have you seen a 70-year-old sprinter like a 20-year-old? Uh, like no, they, it's just that even if you exercise daily, your exercise capacity will go down, uh, your lung capacity, your heart capacity will go down, just like any other organ pancreas also has a life expectancy, right? So it goes down as we get older. So as and then ironically, if we get fatter as we get older. So think about this. So you are actually spending more, more and more money, but you're making less and less. So if you're spending more money in your 60s, uh, but you are making much less money uh, compared to your 20s, of course, you're going to go bankrupt. So, so we expect you to make more money as you get older, as you get more experienced, right? Um, and, and then be wiser and spend less, maybe, whatever the case, right? Uh, so, but if you do the opposite, uh, if you just go be um, very wasteful and don't work, then you're going to go bankrupt, and, you, and then, then, then not, that's not going to work. Same thing for the body. So our pancreas goes older. Um, as a result, you know, we are making less insulin. That's not something you can work on. Unfortunately, that's genetically determined. Uh, and if, if our body, if, if, if not conditioned, if you're not exercising, eating well, and keeping your weight down, then inevitably you're going to have type 2 diabetes. Uh, again, it's not always your fault. Uh, some people are 
400 pounds and they still don't have diabetes in their 50s, 60s, just because genetically they're strong, they make a lot of insulin, doesn't mean that that's a good thing. You know, they, they're still insulin resistant. They still get cancer, they still get heart attacks, they still get all those problems. Um, but to develop diabetes, you uh, have to have uh, less insulin than your body needs. Uh, that's, uh, that's a relative term again. Now, that is uh, true for type 2 diabetes. So as a result, you know, we have some type 1 diabetics, for example, who were diagnosed. Of course, they were skinny when they were diagnosed, but they are taking a lot of insulin, eating a lot of carbs. As a result, they look like type 2 20 years after just because they gained so much weight and they developed insulin resistance. So you don't have to have type 2 diabetes um, to develop insulin resistance. You can be insulin resistant and you can still have type 1 diabetes. So as a result, you know, these are not hardcore solid facts in terms of their weight and how they look, etc. We make a complete analysis to make sure you, we understand the difference. Now, another uh, difference, uh, type 1 versus uh, type 2 diabetes, is that we have 80-plus uh, medications in the market. The market is flooded with medications. Not that, again, we are not a pro-diabetes uh, medicine uh, doctors, but uh, if you need a medication, it is it is uh, uh, reassuring or at least relieving that we actually can choose from uh, 80 different diabetic drugs. That gives us options. You know, everybody is different and so forth. With type 1 diabetes, our options are limited. Uh, it's just that all these medications are designed to make your beta cells, to make your pancreas work a little harder, a little better. Uh, but if your pancreas is dead and you have no beta cells left, most of these medications won't work. Some of the medications work differently. Uh, sometimes they are not approved for type 1 uh, just because of the economics. You know, most companies don't spend money on the studies for type 1 diabetics because they're, they're the minority. Uh, so they try to invest more in the type 2 diabetes treatment uh, area. So as a result, they developed less drugs for type 1 diabetes versus type 2. So we end up using insulin a lot for type 1 diabetics, although although we will use off-label medications sometimes for type 1 diabetes just because as a physician I know how these medications work and if I think that that medication will help my type 1 diabetic patient uh, for example you know, Victoza or Ozempic or Ribelsis, these are designed for type 2 diabetic patients. But the way they work can actually help type 1 diabetic patients to keep their weight down and so forth. And if they are getting uncontrollable weight gain, and no matter what we say with the diet, they are still gaining weight, then I sometimes use medications to cut their appetite or to use these medications to my advantage to help them out. Uh, that is also possible, and we do what we have to do uh, for our patients. So. Again, uh, one more difference between type 1 versus type 2 diabetes is that patients with type 1 diabetes tend to get a lot of low blood sugars. And, uh, and that happens because uh, they actually uh, end up taking a lot of insulin shots, right? Every time they eat, they have to take an insulin shot. And, and a, one miscalculation of what they eat and how much insulin they take can cause a, a severe low blood sugar. They are also missing another important hormone to type 1 diabetics. They are missing glucagon, which is a hormone that actually elevates your blood sugar when your sugar is dropping. So that is like a break, that's like a protective mechanism. Uh, but when pancreas dies, uh, beta cells die, but also alpha cells die, that makes the glucagon. So as a result, they don't have the protection from low blood sugars either. That happens more often as they uh, develop uh, diabetes uh, down the road, like 10 years of diabetes type 1. Uh, that, that is um, much more common to lose alpha cells eventually. But when you're a new type 1 diabetic, that's the best time. We sometimes call this honeymoon. Sometimes you don't even need much of an insulin. But as time goes by, managing type 1 diabetes becomes more and more difficult. So as a result, we use insulin pumps. We use Dexcom G6. We use free cell Libre, whatever we can to uh, make sure that we can monitor the blood sugars very effectively and we can intervene when necessary. Another thing we do at SugarMDs, guys, so we respond to you immediately. If you have a low blood sugar, you have a high blood sugar, you can get hold of us immediately uh, through texting, emailing. Texting is the best way, actually, uh, through our app, whatever it may be. And we also sometimes will get alerts and we'll say, okay, what's going on with this patient? You know, he's or she's having a lot of low or high. We contact you and then we kind of fix the regimen. A lot of things can affect the blood sugars, guys. So it can be, 
can be stress, it can be uh, periods for women, uh, it can be um, uh, it can be depression, it can be the exercise or change in the environment. A lot of things will affect the diabetes management. And if you don't really make adjustments, or if your doctor doesn't make adjustments on a day-to-day -day or a, at a weekly, monthly, whatever it may be, depending on how stable your life is, uh, your blood sugar may not stay stable. Uh, a lot of times people have also uh, misunderstandings about what is low blood sugar, what is high blood sugar. Uh, and that is, uh, 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 you know, it's, a, it's an education piece we always try to give to our patients. Now, um, so we said that hypoglycemia, low blood sugar is very, very common with uh, type 1 diabetes patients. It can happen with type 2 diabetes as well, especially if they're on sulfonylurea agents such as galipozide, glyburide, glimepiride. These medications can drop your blood sugars. It's, it's ironic. We tell patients to... Um, take the medicine to correct the high blood sugars, but then we tell them to eat to prevent the low blood sugar and they end up gaining weight. So the, these sulfonylureas are not my favorite. We use them sometimes if you have to, or some patients are just, uh, just do well, and you know, some others don't. So if you're not doing well on these agents, you definitely need an alternative medication. There are a lot of medications that does not cause uh, drop in blood sugars. There are a lot of diabetic medications that can help with the weight loss and control your diabetes at the same time. So if you need a medication, so I think that's your best bet to uh, basically get a uh, medication that can prevent the low blood sugar uh, and also help with the weight loss. And we definitely will help you to achieve that goal and to get that medication. They're not next they're not cheap they're they're expensive but i think with a good team uh of professionals we can get what we want from insurance provided that uh, that's it's really medi medically necessary there are a lot of uh waste happens in the insurance space and uh there are a lot of back and forth um but we try to provide the cost effective care uh but our patients are first so we make sure that the, you guys are taken care of very well so I hope uh, that explains uh, most of the questions that you may have. If you have more questions, please uh, go ahead and um, uh, give a, a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and ask your question. Uh, if you are asking a detailed question, question about your personal history uh, and personal diabetes care, we don't reply to those questions on YouTube. It is not a safe environment. We don't want to expose your information. We don't, it's, it's a HIPAA regulation, especially if you're from the United States. You will know that we have certain laws that, that prevent us uh, sharing patient information or patient data or exposing patient data to unknown parties. Uh, so uh, whatever the consequences may be, we don't know, but we, we abide by the law and we cannot answer specific questions. But if you're asking general questions about type one versus type two, uh, more than welcome, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, remember to subscribe. We are getting you videos, couple videos every week. They're very informative and education, diabetes education is the key. Go to our website, uh, sugarmds.com. Uh, that is also very important for you to understand uh, the diabetes. There's a diabetes education section, which you can read a lot of articles.